You're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm going to be talking with Fortinet about the evolution of 5G and what this means for security. We're going to be discussing the role of private 5G networks, open RAN, network slicing, and roaming. So let me now introduce Tom Walker, Manager, Consulting Systems Engineering, Telco and 5G at Fortinet, and Ronan Spira, Director, Solutions Marketing at Fortinet. Welcome both of you and thanks so much for joining our discussion today. There's a huge amount of interest at the moment around private 5G networks and we're seeing a lot of press announcements from both the telecom and the business markets. Ronan, what's your view on the main reason for its success and can you share with us some real world private 5G security use cases? Sure, sure Guy. So I think that there, well, those are facts that actually uh, um, almost dictate um, the success of private 5G networks. Uh, the first one is that, um, you know, private 5G networks is something that is very uh, interesting for the, for, for, for the enterprise um, in a way that mobile, um, uh, previous mobile generations uh, uh, were not. Um, and that's, that's because of the capabilities that 5G bring to play. The problem is that if you look at public 5G today, um, you have certain significant limitations um, one is that, um, you know, today 5G, public 5G is really around enhanced mobile broadband, which is important, but, you know, enterprises, when we think about, um, you know, the different use cases uh, that are enabled by 5G, you know, just enhanced mobile broadband is, is, is the tip of the iceberg. So, so one factor is that public 5G doesn't deliver what it needs to deliver or what it will deliver in the coming years. And of course, something as strategic as 5G to an enterprise, its use cases, its transformation, um, they don't want to wait until the things are available on the public uh, network. They want to try and test and do it um, themselves. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, um, again, because of the criticality, criticality of 5G in these use cases for these uh, um, enterprises, now there is a lot of reluctance to actually rely on a public network. Um, and, and, and they really want to have, um, you know, the control, the ability to make sure that, you know, the, the data, the network, um, everything around it is under their complete control and management and their ability to determine how and, 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 and in what form and fashion um, it will work. Um, and then, of course, there is, um, there is this, I would say, uh, not fear, but uncertainty regarding security, right? Um, you know, critical assets, critical use cases, eventually, you know, um, entire processes um, would rely on 5G. And um, there is a great concern uh, regarding the integrity and security that public 5G can can offer. Um, so, and so I think that, you know, all of that, um, and there are other factors as well, but these are the main factors that actually push um, enterprises to adopt, uh, you know, private 5G networks. Um, and, um, you know, some of the use cases um, that we are seeing, um, and, and this is really the early days, um, are, um, first of all, a lot of uh, trials. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's the number one use case today that we, we're seeing, the real live use cases is, is enterprises actually installing and, and, and trying to understand the technology and to trying to understand what it can bring to them beyond, you know, the hype and the theory, um, what it can do for me, how can I use it, what does it mean, what is the difference between reality and standard and theory. Uh, so that's one thing that they're doing. The other thing is really they're taking the first thing, which is already reliable and well, well understood, and that's the, that's the radio access network, the 5G new radio. Um, and they're playing with it. They're actually, this is where we see the first real live production environments where, um, you know, the high bandwidth, but coupled with, um, you know, the precision and the deterministic nature and reliable nature of that radio access networks, allow them to um, um, provide mobility both to machines, but mostly to their workforce in a way that was not possible, is not possible with Wi-Fi and is not possible, was not possible with, with previous mobile generation. So mobility, both for the workforce and the machines is something which is starting to happen to happen right now. And then we're seeing a lot of testing around safety, physical safety, 
whether it's uh, uh, safety around locations, the campus where the private 5G, uh, 5G network is installed, for example, drones and others, um, but also safety, uh, personal safety. So the ability to identify uh, men down situation, um, you know, virtual security curtains and so on um, and so forth. But again, this is really, really uh, the beginning. Now, private 5G networks are expensive to build and expensive to maintain, both in cost and resources. They're out of reach for many smaller enterprises. Network slicing has the potential to deliver a kind of flavor of private networks to, to a larger segment of the business market and at a reduced cost. Ronan, can you share with us your view on this technology and the role security can play in driving its deployment and adoption? Yeah, so I think that network slicing is something which is was always advertised in one of the key uh, capabilities that 5G brings to bear. And I think it's extremely interesting and it's extremely interesting for several aspects. Um, one is, um, you know, internal use uh, of the, the, the operators themselves. They can use that technology network slicing to more efficiently provide the type of services that they want to provide to, you know, to enterprises and to the grand public. For example, I want a network slice that is uh, focus on a specific type of traffic that will allow me to very efficiently uh, meet the different requirements of that type of, of traffic and so on and so forth. I can provide network slicing um, services to to enterprises, to, to to entire industries, to first responders, or to specific enterprises. So it's a it's a way to make to provide uh, um, and, and a means to 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 generate more value and therefore generate more stickiness and more 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 revenue. Um, for for enterprises, um, um, it's it's a great opportunity. First of all, it's a great opportunity, even when we're talking about a private network, 5G networks, to use network slicing on top of the 5G networks because it provides that agility and granularity um, to meet the different requirements of different type of use cases. But specifically for small enterprises, it allows them to start and customize their 5G network. So being able to use a public 5G network, but with the um, added uh, you know, value of something which is customized for my need, for my use case, right? Now, when you think about it, it means that you know, slicing, network slicing in 5G over public 5G network is going to become, when it's available, it's not commercially available right now, um, it's going to become more and more um, critical for many, many enterprises. Uh, small enterprises that are going to use it for different use cases, but also, you know, large enterprises that might already have you know, private 5G networks, but they want to enable use cases that are national or international, where they would want, in addition to the private 5G network, to have network slicing or consume network slicing for the specific use cases and products and services. Um, so, so network slicing would become something which is very critical. Now, our view is that the technology behind network slicing that enables network slicing is 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 really is, is very well thought of and and, and relatively uh, well isolated and and secure and and I think that the key role that security has to play here, um, at least in the uh, uh, mid to uh, midterm, is um, how do I actually use security in order to make sure that. Um, the critical use case um, uh, that that specific slice is being used for um, is protective. So how do I ensure integrity? How do I ensure security? Um, how do I provide the right security SLA? And, and even for a mobile operator, how do I actually use security um, to monetize, to generate more revenue? So in, uh, in addition to actually providing a network slice with specific customization or capabilities, um, how do I also provide specific security services and guarantees that are tailored for that specific um, slice, use case, and customer? I think probably to add to that, um, uh, one important aspect of, of network slicing, and when we think about security, is that the security of any given slice, uh, uh, whether it be for a specific vertical or a specific use case, or even right down to a specific customer, uh, can vary dramatically from slice to slice, use case to use case. So the operator uh, and in turn, the enterprise who's consuming that slice needs to have the flexibility to deliver security functions as part of their overall service uh, to augment and to enhance their service capability. 
But there will also be situations where we have slices that are shared by multiple use cases, multiple customers, or multiple verticals. And where we have that shared environment, there needs to be the ability to provide granular security controls still across the shared um, access medium between different slice, slice customers. Um, so it's important that any slice design, and I think this is this is key because the definition of how operators and enterprises will uh, utilize network slicing, how they'll be defined, whether it's per vertical or per customer, per use case, um, really needs to include security as part of that slice design from the outset. That's the security of the slice as a whole, which Ronan's touched upon, but importantly, the security functions within the slice that benefit the consumer of that slice, the enterprise, for example. Thanks, Tom. And moving on to another very popular topic, Open RAN. This gives rise to an ecosystem of multi-vendor capabilities. But Tom, surely this open multi-integrated approach also presents some important security challenges. Yeah, it does indeed. So um, I think that the basis and the foundations for what Open RAN uh, is, is uh, trying to deliver and trying to bring, which is ultimately an open ecosystem um, and an ability to drive down the complexity and the cost sometimes associated with uh, single rent, single vendor scenarios um, it, it is a, a, a great foundational uh, benefit. But the key aspect of having a multi-vendor environment is that you potentially have a number of different uh, possible threat vectors and a number of uh, additional types of risk uh, and threat that you need to consider within that, that overall ecosystem. Um, so being able to provide segmentation between different uh, technology types and vendor types, being able to have granular visibility across how those different components are stitched together technically, but also how information is being shared and passed between those components. And importantly, as part of any exposure function, whether that's as part of the service that's being offered for Open RAN, or importantly, uh, exposure capabilities to allow those vendor technologies to be updated as part of a, a software update cycle, needs to have granular control um, and importantly, visibility to ensure that the, there is clarity on what's being updated by who, when and how. So really, Open RAN gives a, a lot of potential benefit to the operators and ultimately to consumers. But having a multi-vendor, uh, multi-faceted environment can bring with it some additional potential risk and threat. I, I also want to add that you know, we talk about Open RAN, but Open RAN is a part of, of, of a bigger picture or a bigger ecosystem, and that is the Radio X network or the 5G new RAN. And this is something which has uh, never been so important. I mean, there, there, there are many, many capabilities that are only depend on, on, on the RAN itself and its capabilities, plus the fact that it's much more distributed, it's highly scalable, that um, a lot of it is going to determine and not just in the core, but at the, uh, you know, at the edge compute side, the multi-access edge compute sites, all of that. Um, and, and, and Open RAN is part of that evolution or calls for by default, you know, a, a very stringent and, 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 and security build up for this environment from the outset. Thanks, Ronan. Now, one aspect of cellular communications that's been significantly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic is roaming. Now, it's expected that once the pandemic is under control, roaming traffic and therefore revenue will return to pre-pandemic levels and should then continue to grow. But we also know that roaming is significantly involved in 5G, both in terms of its architecture and its use cases. Tom, what's your view on the impact that these two drivers have when it comes to the need for roaming security? So from uh, actually, there's some very recent developments uh, in the likes of GSMA and 3GPP uh, and across some of the major tier one operators um, in that there's an initiative to uh, further enhance the 5G roaming uh, standards and mandates to include uh, full security for the user plane. Um, and that has the potential to have quite far reaching impact to 5G roaming for these operators. Um, one, it, it certainly provides an added level of security control and guarantee when they consider the user plane communication between operators. And that can be quite compelling, um, especially where an operator, operator needs to ensure 
and guarantee the validity of the communication they're passing and that there's no intermediary or, or middleman that's affecting or changing that traffic. Um, but it has significant bearing on the operator because the mandate is for, or the potential mandate is for encrypting that user plane traffic. And that adds uh, potential uh, impact and additional cost that the operator needs to consider in terminating uh, many types of uh, uh, encrypted connections from many hundreds, if not thousands of network operators. And that adds additional levels of um, uh, equipment requirement uh, or VNF requirement to be able to terminate those, those security connections and provide that additional level of, of, of granular control. And as we imagine, once we move out of the pandemic and we start to return to uh, the pre-pandemic types of uh, travel uh, and international communication, the overall uh, uh, level of traffic and importantly user plane traffic, because subscriber behavior um, is continually evolving and is moving very much towards um, an explosive user plane consumption model where they, they're using a lot more real-time communication, a lot more video and streaming and continual updates, then the growth in that user plane and the need to secure that user plane adds additional complexity and potential cost burden to the operator. But the benefit here is that it allows the operator to ensure that granular level of security control uh, and mitigate potential threat that affects the user plane, um, the, the subscriber's traffic, but also uh, can potentially affect the operator from a potential impact via another operator. Uh, be it trusted or untrusted. And I want to take it even further, right? So not only when 5G roaming is is there and, 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 and deployed, think about when you have, um, for example, international 5G slices. So uh, operators actually share slices, provide end-to-end -end slicing, um, international end-to-end -end slicing. So um, again, these use cases give a whole new meaning to the importance and the role that roaming has to play. And in that case, again, you know, security has, uh, or, or, you know, a, a breach or, 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 or a failure uh, is, is, has a whole different, uh, uh, you know, meaning and, and implications. Therefore, roaming security becomes uh, much more important, but that's really looking uh, into the future. Sure, well, thank you, Ronan and Tom. That does bring our discussion to an end, although I'm sure we'll have plenty more to say on the subject as 5G matures and continues to evolve. For now, though, thank you both for your insights and taking part. And you can view more interviews, roundtables and features, all part of our Spotlight on 5G series right here on Telecom TV. For now, though, thanks for watching and goodbye.